Well, hello and welcome. This is the Box of Delights, one in one, the title music. Um, so what I've done is um, given you the the, the music um, which you've just um, been listening to, and now this is the reduction of that. Um, so the only instruments that we really have are the harp, um, which is playing in octaves um, on its own, and then violins, which are muted over here. The other thing that's playing is horns, muted, and trombones, just two. Uh, four horns, two trombones, which just dovetail uh, with each other as well. Um, and what's really, really remarkable about this is that it's the perfect uh, music supervision. Um, you know, it's incredibly creepy, um, as a lot of BBC children's television was from the 1940s to the 1980s. Um, and um, this this really, this series, uh, interestingly, it was one of the most expensive series uh, that the BBC had done um, for children. Uh, I think it cost a million pounds, which in the time was was astonishing amounts of money. Um, so the actual music itself is by somebody called Victor Healy Hutchinson, um, who's a rather interesting chap. But he um, basically wrote this piece in 1927, and this is the third movement um, of this particular carol symphony um and it is basically uh, d major the first noel with an octatonic scale um or part octatonic scale um which is why it um is sort of creepy and having seen the title music um it is it, it, you kind of get the the idea basically that it is creepy but i love the fact that it turns from creepiness into something which is rather rather beautiful um, so you'll see that the harposonato are simply the first few notes of the first Noel itself. So they're just in a different order, basically. That's all that happens. And the ossonato itself doesn't remain exactly the same. So, for example, um, he's changed it here, where there's no semiquaver in the bar and without a tonic. Um, and there's a very clever sort of um, way of tension and release that's going on here. Um, so the way it starts, by the way, the A sharp or B flat is because the previous chord was uh, an F sharp major chord. And so that A sharp becomes like that um so i just wanted to play it an octave lower just because it's um difficult to actually hear otherwise um rather than the the, the harp obviously being being done in octaves so except you know it's sort of really tinkly basically um so uh, we've got the first few notes of the first noel it avoids the tonic d a little bit so it's all sort of like three, five, two, four, that sort of thing in terms of scale degrees. And then we've got like that, which is from uh, this, or I suppose you could even call it sort of um, sort of Locrian as well. Um, so uh, either way is, is fine, actually. It doesn't really matter. But the fact is that it's it's in counterpoint to something which is major uh, with that. Um, so that's what we've got. That's basically the harmony that's going on. Um, so what I've done is I've telescoped the, the notes here, which are here um, as well. Then we've got the D, sh D flat and C. And also notice that the F sharp is also contained within it, which is why I've put it as, a, as an octatonic rather than D major with sort of Locrian mode, that sort of thing, just because it combines both scales quite nicely, apart from the D. Um, so if it had the D in it, it would be this. Like that, which is very chromatic. So the, the only chromatic notes missing are there. Um, F natural and A flat, that sort of thing. 
um, and be natural as well so um yeah a really really astonishing uh, piece of music and then um later on the synths take over right at the end uh, where we got the sort of trumpet synth uh, over the top and we've also got this sort of really weird martry synth going on and this sort of extraordinary cluster like that cluster um uh two as well and that's all sort of fades in um to the um to the to the first scene where we see the steam train um so it really sets the tone it's, it's incredibly interesting realistic and i also wonder whether you could sort of perhaps do the same with any other carol um you know taking the first few notes um Uh, and then we could have, you know, an octatonic to T2. Yeah, sort of really, really harsh dissonance, perhaps. And then... sort of thing maybe just going into that i don't know but it might give you some ideas about sort of creepy christmas uh, making christmas slightly creepy um it is that time of year for ghosts and and all that sort of thing and the supernatural um so i hope you've enjoyed that it's just um you know a very short um introduction by the way the synth part all of that incidental music is by a chap called roger lim uh from the bbc radiophonic workshop an incredible uh team of people um and uh you know you'll you'll see his work in doctor who uh, and i've listed all of those things particular things the keeper of charkin um of course arc of infinity the caves of androzani and revelation of the daleks as well all of them uh really uh, astonishing um bits of music and score perhaps slightly corny these days maybe you could argue um but it's still quite effective certainly for kids at the time um and um yeah i just thought it was seasonal and, and thought i'd do a little short um analysis for you it's not really much of an analysis because there's only two things going on in it but i hope you've I, i've explained how this comes about from the first few notes of that and that all of this comes about because of the octatonic scale juxtaposed with d as well um so an octatonic scale that doesn't include the note d um so um that's it folks um and i look forward to seeing you again soon with more of a new hope and um i'll see you soon bye <laughs>